Well, Katie, thank you so much for uh, talking to me today. How have yeah, you been? Yeah, I've been great. Thanks. It's been a busy morning here in Mazda Square Garden, but um, all is well. It's I'm very very excited. Okay, so you're you're in the the U.S. now. Is the plan to to basically stay here until fight night? Yeah, I think so. Um, I've obviously been based in Connecticut for the last few years as a half term professional, so this is where all my train train actually happens. So, um, I'm I've already started training camp a few weeks ago. I'm I'm uh, I'm all set to stay here for the for the the next few months and uh, just to get my head down uh, in the gym constantly working hard and uh, looking forward to April the 30th. When you just said you know uh, the idea of starting training camp a few weeks ago did you have that in mind that this fight was probably going to happen at that point or were there still some doubts in your mind? Um, I, I there's obviously talks that the fight happened and uh, I obviously knew that the, that the fight was going to happen a few weeks ago and um, when, once I knew that, uh, I obviously upped the training, but um, I've just been kind of been sitting back and reflecting over, over the last few years, nearly pinched myself that this fight has actually happened now, be, a fight that's been dubbed as, as the biggest uh, fight in female boxing history in Madison Square Gar- Garden, the most iconic arena. And um, this is just really the, the, the stuff of dreams, really. And um, uh, just been thanking God really over the last few weeks since the fight has been announced. I mean, the, the weight of that statement, you know, the biggest fight in female boxing history. I mean, what does that mean to you? And, and is there any doubt that this is the biggest fight in female history? Yeah, I, I mean, it really is. This is a fight that's, that's been talked about, I think, over the last few years. These are the kind, of, the, the kind of fights I've always wanted as well. Since I turned professional a few years ago, I've, I have my, my eyes fairly fixed on, a, on all the big fights. And Serrano, Serrano was obviously one of them. Uh, so this is a fight that I've actually looked forward to for uh, quite some time now. And um, I think it's actually the most exciting fight in the sport, uh, not just because of our records, but I believe that our styles will produce a fantastic fight. And um, and just uh, like, like I said, just uh, this is incredible. It feels like uh, we're, we're bringing the whole sport up with us as well. This is the, the, the type of legacy that I've actually dreamed, uh, dreamt of uh, when I was a kid. I know that you won't know really what what Amanda's made of until you get in the ring and you actually have the fight. But on paper, um, I mean, you fought some fantastic fighters, you know, the two fights with Delphine Pursoon, uh, mm-hmm. the fight with Natasha Jonas. On, on paper, is it safe to say that, you know, Amanda Serrano is the toughest test of your career at this point? Yeah, I'm definitely preparing for the toughest uh, fight possible. Um, I'm, I'm obviously prepared every single time I step into the ring for, uh, for any um uh, for whatever it comes my way so i don't think there, there's any surprise at this stage of my career um i'm preparing for the toughest uh, battle I'll, I'll be i'll be ready for whatever comes my way i think on, on on fight night um but yeah she's obviously a, a great fighter she has a great record there, there's no doubt about that um and she's not she's not here for no reason she's she's obviously uh, deserving to be to be, uh, to be in here as well and, and and to be part of this historic event so i'm obviously going to be ready for whatever comes my way I know that originally this fight was supposed to take place in, in 2020. Uh, COVID happens, that kind of messes everything up. Is there any ill will from, from that instance of the negotiations breaking down? Do you, do you feel that at all, or, or is that kind of water under the bridge at this point? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say there's any uh, ill will from my, from my side of things. Um, I obviously, that, that year, I obviously I got another big fight in, in, in the Brazilian rematch. It was a fantastic year for me. Um, and I also felt like that the fight was going to happen eventually anyway. So uh, sometimes you just have to be a bit more patient than, than other times. <laughs> and um, this is a this is obviously the, the fight that everyone wanted to see from from the very from the very get go. This is a fight that, that I've always wanted as well. So I'm I'm so excited that that it is actually happening right now. Um, and like I said, it is being dubbed as the biggest fight in female boxing history. This is a, 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 an iconic uh, night and. Um, yeah, this is uh, just incredible. Looking at 2020, I was going back over some of the things that were written, some of the things that were said, and Serrano's <clears throat> promoter, Lou DiBella, said that Eddie told him that if you pass up on this fight, if this, if you don't make this happen and meet our demands, this fight's never going to happen. Serrano's never going to fight Katie Taylor. Is that true? Was, was that something that was actually said? Do you, do you have any knowledge of that? You'd have to ask Eddie about that. As he does. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. laughs> I, I have no idea what conversations were, were had, to be honest. Um, 
But as far as I'm concerned, I was ready to fight um, uh, at any stage, and I wasn't the one that, that pulled out of that fight. So, um, but I think this this fight right now is, is bigger than it's ever been, and it's actually happened at, 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 at exactly the right time. I know that the boxing business and negotiations can get messy. Were you afraid that maybe this fight might never happen? Yeah, I mean, that's always uh, in, in the back of your mind. There's, there's obviously plenty of fights uh, that have never happened in, in boxing as a whole, which is always so disappointing. Mm-hmm. You see the likes of uh, Errol Spence and Ter- Terence Crawford, for example, that fight should have happened. You see the likes of uh, Manny Pacquiao and Fly Mayweather, that fight happened maybe five years too late. Mm-hmm. There, are, there, are the, there are plenty of fights that haven't ha- happened, unfortunately, in the sports. So, um, But thankfully, um, everything um, came together nicely just at the right time, and here we are putting obviously this is a mammoth event how did the wheels get in motion to have this happen right now at the right time at the right place um how were you approached about it and how did it really come into fruition on on your end at least um i think uh, over the last few months of the fight was seriously talked about it again and um before my, my last fight i was uh, all the all I was asked, I was the man of Savannah fight, and I was sick kind of saying, you know, I actually have a fight to focus on right now, but I think uh, I knew that if I got through my last opponent and then she got through her opponent, that this fight was actually going to happen. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I think over the last few months, I knew that um, it, was, it was very, very close to happen. I just had to look, look after my job in the ring in, in, in the last fight. Arguably, you're the, the biggest name in, in female boxing today. Um, has it taken some time to get used to everybody calling you out and everyone having kind of your name on their tongue or is that just kind of go with the territory and something that you're used to at this point? Yeah. I mean, I think it's a great position to be in where there's no shortage of big fights out there. It's, it's a great, uh, it's a great place for me to be in where everyone's actually calling me out. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and it's, it's happened in such a short space of time as well. I obviously turned pro five years ago and here we are getting ready for the biggest fight, uh, in, in boxing history. And, um, the sport has just grown over the last few years so much. Um, I think it's incredible how there's an appetite for this kind of fight as well. And, and this is obviously being dubbed as the biggest fight in, in, in such an iconic arena in Madison Square Garden. This has never happened before in the 140-year history of Madison Square Garden. This is actually incredible. This is the type of legacy that I actually have dreamt of leading the sport. And, um, yeah, I'm in a great position. The, the location, Madison Square Garden, were you presented with multiple locations that this fight would be possible? And, and what, what brought the garden about? What made that like, yeah, that's it. That's the place. I think it's just known to be the most iconic venue in boxing history. When you think of Madison Square Garden, you are thinking of the likes of Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier kind of fights. Mm-hmm. And when, even when you're walking around at the, the arena here, you're seeing the posters of all the iconic fights. And and now we have uh, myself and Amanda Serrano headline in such a huge uh, historic event. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any other venue uh, in, in discussion, really. I think everyone uh, was in agreement that we all wanted to hear in, in, this, in this iconic venue. I think a lot of people might be surprised initially, especially if they don't know your background, that that you took the fight um, and what many are going to perceive as Amanda's home territory, her home state, her, you know, her hometown. But you've you fought at Madison Square in two at Madison Square Garden twice before. How much does that add into your comfortability with the environment there? Yeah, I mean, um, I had the privilege of fighting here twice before, and I actually became undisputed champion here. So I have mm-hmm. great memories of fighting here, and um, and New York is also full of uh, Irish people as well. So the, the the two times I have fought here, it's been full of Irish people. It's been full of uh, the, the tricolor flags, the Irish flags around the, the arena, and I don't think it's going to be any different on April the thirtieth. I think there's a lot of Irish people actually flying over to the to the event as well. Um, so I'm not really um concerned about fighting her territory i think it's gonna be uh, it's 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 incredible that the irish fans are so passionate the puerto rican fans are so passionate it's gonna make for such a, an incredible atmosphere i know that the perception is when a fighter is not fighting in their home or you know the perceived home of the other fighter that that um is the judging going to be on the up and up is that going to give them an, an upper hand are there any concerns about anything like that no, I, that's not even something that ever comes into my mind. Uh, stepping into the ring, I just focus on my fight and focus on my preparation and, and lead up to the fight. And once I step in there, I'm going to uh, do everything I can do to, to come out victorious. I'm, I never ever think of the judging or, the, or, or anything like that. 
the X's and O's of this thing, looking at the, the construction of you two as fighters, uh, obviously Amanda Serrano being a Southpaw, um, your history with Southpaws, I mean, you're, you're undefeated, you've never lost. Um, what type of wrinkle does that add? Or is it just kind of something that you're used to and you feel like you've had the experience enough where it doesn't phase you at this point? Yeah, I mean, it really doesn't phase me. I think uh, he's, even as an, uh, as an amateur boxer, you're coming across Southpaws on, uh, on um on a daily on a weekly basis in sparring and in competition and um i am a very very experienced fighter and nothing uh, nothing can surprise me i don't think at this stage i've came across every single style right now i've uh, i've seen uh, i've seen absolutely everything whether it's in sparring or in competition or in the ring so um I, i'm i'm gonna be well prepared for whatever comes my way you know i know that that Amanda's the featherweight champion, but she's been pretty mobile uh, moving up and down in weight throughout her career. Do you feel like going up in weight, you know, to, to, to lightweight uh, diminishes the, the perceived advantage and power that she may have that, that maybe it's not going to be quite the same thing when she fights as a lightweight? Um, I think she's probably um, more of a natural lightweight than she, than she lets on. I, 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 mm-hmm. I think uh, there, there's, no, there's no difference in her size, really. Um, I, it's surprising how she actually goes down to, to, the, to the lower weight classes. She is significantly bigger than those uh, than, than those opponents. Um, but I, I don't really, I'm not really worried about the, the, the power side of things. I've been in with the bigger, the biggest plungers. I've, I've, I, I, I've known to have a, uh, to have a good chin, a great chin. So that's not, that's not something that ever bothers me. Um, I think her power is going to be diminished when I step into the ring with her. Not, not just because she's stepping up in weight or whatever, but. Uh, that's not something that ever uh, comes into my mind. You know, something that people don't necessarily talk about when they talk about great champions is their, their mental strength and um, their ability to handle the moment. Obviously this fight, we've talked about how big it is uh, and, and the perception of it is the biggest fight in, in female boxing history uh, fighting in the U S which again, you're used to uh, her titles, your titles, but it's your titles on the line. Um, are you feeling any pressure from this? I mean, you seem like a pretty cool customer coming into this fight. Yeah, I mean, I think um, it would be unusual if it wasn't, uh, if the pressure, the pressure wasn't on me going into these fights. I think I'm so used to dealing with pressure now. Um, ever since I was an amateur boxer, I was going into the London Olympic Games with all the, uh, the gold medal I'm, I nearly wrapped around my neck before I even stepped into the ring. Uh, all the media at, at home in Ireland were, uh, that was a foregone conclusion. I was going to come home, with a, uh, go, go home with a gold medal. That the pressure was huge going into that competition, and um, and I, 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 I actually feel like I'm, I'm born for occasions like this. I love the pressure. I love the pressure fights. I, I've always wanted to be involved in the biggest fights possible. And um, my family will tell you, ever since I was a teenager, I've always wanted to fight the very, very be- uh, best in the sport. That's why I am involved in professional boxing, and um, I live for moments like this. Final question for me, and I'll let you go. Um, your last fight was in December. Uh, you boxed masterfully. It was a good, tough scrap, uh, but I mean, you you controlled the fight. Um, any residual from that fight? Was there any injuries? Anything that you were concerned about after that fight? Or I mean, were you pretty much tip top shape after that one? Yeah, pretty much in tip top shape. Uh, thank thank God. Um, I'm going into this fight up to 100. percent Um, I'm uh, every, everything's going well. Training's going great, and. Um, I'm excited about this. This is going to be the, the biggest night in my career, I feel, and I'm going to produce a, the best performance of my career, and I'm, uh, I'm so excited about it. Well, I know when I saw it, uh, the, the press release, I was excited about it. I think everyone's mm-hmm. excited about it. Uh, Katie, thank you so much for the time, and, and best yeah. of luck come April 30th. Thank you so much, Jeremy. I really appreciate it.